What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Foot and Fist Sports Network, where it's time to go over the prelims for UFC 214. Now, I've already done a video about the main card, so make sure you check that out. It will be in the description down below, and at the end of the video, I'll also have it linked up on the um, at the end screen, so make sure you check that out. Uh, now, talking about the prelims. This is going to be one hell of a prelim card. I'm not usually one of the guys that sits there and, like, goes crazy for the prelims, too. I, myself, uh, am a huge MMA fan. I'm a huge hardcore fan. I've been watching for a fucking long time, but a lot of times I skip the prelims because they're trash. This time, they ain't trash, let me tell you. Andre Feely versus Calvin Catter, uh, Brian Ortega versus Hanato Moicano, Aljamain Sterling versus Hennem Burrell, and Ricardo Lamas versus Jason Knight. These aren't exactly like big name fighters, but these are fights that are going to be entertaining, especially the one I'm going to be talking about right now, which is Andre Feely versus Calvin Catter. Now, Calvin Catter is a guy, he's, this is his UFC debut, if I'm not mistaken, if not, he's had one more fight, but I, I was looking at his history before, I think it was... If, I don't, if I'm not wrong, it was, this is his UFC debut. Andre Feely is a guy who, if you look at his, the guys he's lost to, he's only lost to pretty good, uh, or really good, potentially fighters. If you look, he lost to Yair Rodriguez, but it was a fun fight. I mean, there's no doubt that it was a fun fight. And being a team alpha male, being able to train with some of the best coaches, some of the best fighters, or at least before, before they all pretty much abandoned him, uh, he has definitely had the, had the chance to train with some elite guys. And there's no doubt that Andre Feely, based on what we've seen, has a lot of talent, and he is a guy who could go out and eventually be one of the top dogs in this weight class. Calvin Catter. The thing here, and this is pretty much what I think is going to separate Andre Feely from Calvin Catter, and I apologize if that's not how you pronounce his name, but I think that, excuse me, the big thing is that Andre Feely has so much more octagon experience. Now, over the years, it's been a developing thing that fighters who come in from other organizations struggle like crazy on their UFC debut. It is no secret that Octagon Chitters is a real thing. I think that's going to be a problem for Calvin Catter because he's going to be on a much bigger stage. I think he was in Titan FC or something like that. He's coming from a small, small, small organization to the very biggest one. I think that will be an effect. I will have an effect on him. Andre Feely is going to get the win. I think it's going to be an end of decision, but it's going to be a fun one. I don't think it's going to be like a uh, an easy win for him, but I think it's going to be one of those game, one of those fights where he really showcases what he's got because he's a good wrestler and he's a very lanky dude. So his range is going to be a is going to be a problem. And I do think that if he can really mix in the striking well with his with his wrestling, which is already pretty good, I think it's going to be a pretty decent decent run for him. And you never know. He might be able to get into the higher level uh, bantamweight positions. You never fucking know. Uh, excuse me, featherweight. Next time we're going to talk about Brian Ortega versus Renato Moicano, which is another one of those fights that doesn't have a lot of big name value, but it does have a lot of potential to be a good one. If you haven't seen Renato Moicano, shame on you because he's a very, very fun fighter to watch. He has a lot of skill, and he is a very, very good up-and-comer fighter. Brian Ortega has been in the UFC for quite a while now. The only problem I have with Brian Ortega is his hair. He has that fucking man bun. Hopefully he shaved it, and that does piss me off. So I do think that Minato Moicano is going to win, both because he has a man bun and because of the fact that Brian Ortega uh, is inferior, I think, right now at this level in their game. I think Moicano has more talent. I think that Brian Ortega is a bit limited in his approach. I think his striking is kind of is kind of, is decent, but it's not great. I do think on the, on the ground he's probably a better fighter, um, at least between wrestling and jiu-jitsu, but I do think that Renato Moicano is going to go out there and get the decision win. I think it's going to be an unanimous decision. It's going to be a fun one. I don't think it's going to be the best fight on this prelim card, but it's not going to be a boring one, which is something that you can't usually say for the prelims. Now we have Aljamain Sterling versus Burrell, which is going to be a fucking huge test for Aljamain Sterling. Now this fight was supposed to take place at 135. Unfortunately, for Burrell at least, the California State Athletic Commission refuses to let Burrell fight at 135 because he's missed weight a few times and because he's just... It's based on... The amount of body fat he carries between before the fight, after the fight, during weigh-ins, stuff like that. So, Brandon Brow was not allowed to take, not allowed to fight at 135. So it's gonna be taking place at 140. I think this may favor Brow, but at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. You know, Aljamain Sterling, he lost to Brian Caraway. That's kind of a telling thing. Brian Caraway is a good fighter, but he's not an amazing fighter. And Sterling has a lot to improve. He's a very young fighter. He's got a lot of potential. Brow is fucking a monster, though. Don't make no mistake about it, okay? Yes, he lost to TJ Lashaw in brutal fashion twice, but TJ simply had his number. Um, at 145, he was doing a great job against Jeremy Stevens before he got tired. That was his 145 pound debut. Debut. It's fighting at a different weight class, at a heavier weight class. So your gas tank is different. You have to manage things differently. So I don't really think that he like blew it there. I just think that simply he wasn't used to fighting there, and it cost him. Jeremy Stevens was a veteran there, and Jeremy Stevens is a bad motherfucker. Make no mistake about it. This guy is a beast. So, I mean, uh, Jeremy Stevens is a very fucking good fighter, so there's no shame in losing him. I do think Burrell's going to get this win just because of the experience factor. I think that Burrell is still an amazing fighter, regardless of what happened against TJ Dillashaw. 
I think that Aljamain Sterling in the coming years could potentially be better than Barrow, but let's not make let's not fucking forget. What was it? Like two years ago, Barrow, maybe two, maybe three years ago, Barrow hadn't been defeated in like 30 fights. Something like that. I mean, he was a fucking monster. He was the UFC's Floyd Mayweather, is what they were calling him. I mean, I wouldn't go that far, but regardless, the guy was undefeated for so long. People see him as sort of like a boogeyman. And I mean, now they lost it to, to TJ, obviously got he got exposed a bit and obviously had a hard fight against against Horcher. He's had some I'm not Horcher. Uh what was the guy's name? The Canadian. I'm uh, uh, Min, uh, Mitch Gagnon. Thanks, Sean. Um, yeah, that little tip for my brother. Yeah, he lost to Mitch Gagnon. Uh, not he didn't lose, but he had a hard fight there, and that's not a great thing to that. That's not a great win to have, like to have such a hard problem with Mitch Gagnon. But at the end of the day, he still got the W. I think he's gonna win the fight. I don't. I mean, I think it's gonna be a fun one. I think it's probably gonna be. A sp- uh, I'm I'm sort of torn between a unanimous decision and a very close split decision, but I do think he's gonna get the unanimous decision. Just because on the ground, he's probably better. On the feet, he's better. Overall, I think Barrow's just a better fighter right now. Unanimous decision win. It's going to be a fun one, though. And now, the last fight I'm going to talk about in this video is Ricardo Lamas versus Jason Knight. This one has the potential to be really fun. Ricardo Lamas is one of those guys who, you know, he takes a beating a lot of times, but he always manages to make it a somewhat decent fight. We've seen against, what was it, Nesper Munez that he had a fun fight. Jose Aldo, obviously, he went uh, five rounds. He did win, I think, one round there. Maybe two. I can't remember exactly what happened. I think yeah, I know for a fact he won the fifth round. The fourth round, I think it was pretty close, but I do still think I give it to Jose. Um, Jason Knight. Jason Knight is a very young fighter. He's a very good fighter too. And I think recently, you know, he's beaten Jeremy Stevens. That says a lot. I mean, say what you want. If you beat Jeremy Stevens, holy shit, are you a good fighter? I have a feeling that's going to be, uh, there's a potential upset here. Now, I'm assuming, I haven't checked the odds, but I'm assuming that Ricardo Lamas is the favorite. Jason Knight could go out for the upset. I don't think it's going to happen, though. Why? Because Ricardo Lamas has so much experience, I don't see him getting caught. I don't think it's going to happen. And Jason Knight did win a unanimous, uh, what was it, a split decision against Jeremy Stevens. I can't remember if it was a split or a unanimous decision. Regardless, it was a close fight. And Ricardo Lamas, I think, is pretty much on par with Jeremy Stevens when it comes to skill. Stevens has more power, without a doubt, but Ricardo Lamas has better wrestling. So we're going to see what Jason Knight can do against the guy who's going to try to wrestle fuck him. I personally think he's going to get into some trouble. His jujitsu is very good, but I think that Ricardo Lamas is going to go out there. I think he's going to get the win. You know, his decision. I think it's going to be a fun one, though. Overall, you know, you cannot complain about the quality of this card. Anybody who sits there and says that this card is shit, at least, even obviously the main event, nobody, the main card, nobody's going to say that. But even the prelims, like even the fucking fight brass prelims, like I said in the first one, there's just Josh Berkman in there. That's a fun fight. Josh Berkman doesn't usually put on boring fights, so, you know, there's a lot of quality throughout this card. There's even Caitlin Curran. There's a lot of fucking fun fights here. There's something for just about everybody. If you like jiu-jitsu, if you like striking, kickboxing, boxing, uh, if you like clinch game, there's something here for every single fan possible. And if you don't fucking watch this, even the prelims, shame on you because you're going to be missing out on a lot of stuff. And I'm talking to you, John Luke, over there. I know you're fucking talking shit about the prelims. My brother over here says the prelims are trash. I disagree. Uh, so, yeah, let me know in the comment section down below. Am I right or is G-Money? Or is G-Money right? Is DK right or GK? Let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share it with any friends or any, uh, like, forums, any websites that you're interested in that, that, that show MMA stuff. Please share it there. I'm always very grateful to everybody who tunes in. And let me know in the comment section down below each and every prediction that you have. Do you think I'm insane, insane for some of my predictions? Most people probably think I am. Let me know, though. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you in the Fight Fallout show, which will be coming out Monday or Tuesday. So make sure you guys check that out. See you then.